So Nick, let's start with the name change and the change in strategy off the back of it. Let's work our way through that. Sure, so absolute return income opportunities is really an extension of what a product that I've been involved in for the past 11 to 12 years. Started my career at PIMCO in the late 90s, started a firm called Capstream Capital where we started the absolute return income strategy and we were acquired by Janus in mid-2015. This product is really now an extension of that current product that we, that we run now, which will look to take advantage of global diversification, income generation, high levels of liquidity and low volatility. What are the benefits from shifting from unconstrained to absolute return in your mind? Really, it's just, I mean, for, for the most part, it's just a name more synonymous with how we manage money. We're much more of a team, team approach. Uh, while we do have an open mandate in terms of the assets that we're able to invest in, it is going to strictly focus on fixed income assets. Like we mentioned in that, in that quote, it's going to be a risk, risk reducer. Right now, I think more times than not, what you're seeing in the fixed income world is more managers taking more and more risk, whether it's through triple Bs, whether it's extending out the curve, moving down the capital structure. Yeah. Again, these pose risks. These funds are now looking more like equity strategies and behaving more like equity strategies. This is going to be more fixed income oriented and more defensive. I want you to to help our, our audience understand what happens if a large investor does redeem, does have a big redemption, what you do with the fund, the process you go through and how you set yourself up for potentially that scenario to play out. Sure. The way that we look at things is that we are going to treat every investor equally. We don't give any investor any preferential treatment, and that's our main goal when we face re redemptions or even applications. So when faced with a large re redemption, we know that our portfolio is liquid. Like I said, we're investing in high quality assets. These are investment grade names, shorter dated maturities in the front end of the yield curve, a highly, highly liquid environment. So we're, we're, we're very, very capable of sort of meeting any sort of redemption request. So it sounds come. like to me already, one of the first things you've done is really shorten up duration in the fund. Would that be right? Absolutely. So we are focused on the front end of the yield curve, particularly in the U.S. We think that, as was mentioned in the previous segment, that the yield curve will steepen. So we're anchored largely in the front end, owning corporate debt, government debt in the front end of the yield curve, expecting back end yields to, to rise, but also looking at globally where there's opportunities. Countries like Australia, New Zealand, Canada, parts of Asia, again, front end of the yield curves because we expect we expect those those yield curves to stay relatively flat for the for the near term. So we can work our way through the geographical diversification. I want to get my mind around the bear steepener. Why the long end sells off? Why you should shorten up duration? Why you expect tens, thirties to soften up in the coming months? What's the catalyst for that? So we actually think it's more of the front end rallying, largely because the Fed's going to ease off the gas pedal as it comes to the hiking. So you've already seen that the Fed has basically come out and said that they're going to backstop markets. We think that you're going to see rate hikes or future rate hikes price out of the market for the foreseeable future, which will lead to front end interest rates rallying. If you look at the Fed, they're going to exercise patience as it pertains to growth, but they also want to keep long term inflation expectations anchored, which should help steepen the yield curve. So from what you're saying, you think the front end, just in terms of yields, we've seen the peak for this cycle. I do think so. And I think it offers phenomenal value. You look at the difference between the two year yield in government government bond space at roughly 250 versus the 10 year yield at 270. It doesn't make sense to move out the yield curve unless you believe that we're going to enter a recession, which we don't, or you think we're going to enter into this massive global slowdown. You're not being compensated for that risk. And if we are wrong, hiding in the front end makes a lot of sense because you can you can immunize those losses. You can mitigate that risk a lot easier in the front end than you can the back end. So this theme will make a lot of sense to a lot of people. In fact, for many people watching, it may be borderline obvious, which makes me ask the question, why is there value in this still? There's value in it because I think that short term interest rates offer extreme amount of value. You're not like I said, you're not being compensated for moving out the curve. So you want to focus on good quality assets in the front end, achieve a level of yield that's commiserate with the market. Don't reach too extensively to where you're forcing your portfolio to take on excessive risk, because ultimately, like we said, bonds are supposed to be defensive. They're yeah. not there to be a huge return enhancer for your portfolio. That's for the alternative space. That's for equities, which still plays a, a significant portion in people's portfolios. It sounds like the marketing of this fund has changed radically since you've assumed the management of it. Look, I think it's, it's, it's the same in the sense that we are going to go anywhere to get our returns. Right. And that's one of the key mandates that Bill subscribed to, that we subscribe to. So the philosophy and process is going to be largely the same. The risk profile will be slightly different in the sense that we're going to be focusing strictly on bonds, but that income is going to be able to come from a plethora of different spaces. Something you've emphasized as well is the team aspect to the management of this fund. How crucial is that? 
it's, it's, it's critical. I mean, it's absolutely critical to what we do. We have a very strong team in Newport Beach, California that we rely on very heavily. We also have a team of nine individuals located in Sydney, Australia. We work very closely together. We're also now, as we're, since we're part of the Janice Henderson ecosystem, able to tap into the multitude of resources, whether it's through structured debt, high yield debt, investment grade debt, both in London and in Denver. So this is very much going to be a, a group effort. Conviction call before we let you go. What is it? Again, curse Steepner. Yeah. Uh, we like the banks that was mentioned in the last sector in the last on the credit section, side on the credit side of things, US high quality banks, but also Australian banks.